Hello! In this video tutorial, you will learn how to create a new case study in FinPlan and introduce data for a case study in FinPlan. So first, go to your desktop and click on this FinPlan shortcut. This will take you to the FinPlan interface. Maximize your screen. And first, we will have to go to Manage Case Studies, which is on the left here. We will have to build a new case study, so we'll have to create a new case study on the right here. We will name our case study Hands-On Case Study. And in our case description, we will write Demonstration of the FinPlan Interface with an illustrative coal-based power plant project in Malaysia. Now click on Create Case Study. You'll see that your new case study is now in the Manage Case Studies page over here. Note that you can also copy your case study, so this will just create another copy of it. You can also delete your case study, which will remove it. And there's also a button for you to back up your case study. And this exports your case study as a zip file. So now we will have to provide general information such as plant type, start year, and end year in this new FinPlan case study. So we'll open it. And you'll see that name of the case study has already been filled in for us. So we will not do anything with that. For start year, we are told that our coal power plant um, will start in 2012. So we will write here 2012 and it will end in 2046. Our plant type is a single plant type and case description has already been filled because we did that before. So we will not touch this section. As our coal power plant is in Malaysia, our local currency will be Malaysian Ringgit. And our foreign, foreign currencies will be the US dollar. And we'll drag and drop it here. And now click Save. It's very important to save your data, otherwise you will lose it and FinPlan will not generate the right results. So next we will go to Inflation Information. And the hands-on is telling us that there is a future US dollar inflation rate remaining constant at 3% per annum and 4% per annum for the domestic currency. So for US dollar, we'll click on steady rate and we'll put down three. And for Malaysian ringgit, we'll put down steady rate and we put down four as well. So note that if you put, if you click on yearly input, you can input numbers individually for each year, but as we are looking at a steady rate, we will choose steady rate and put our number here instead. Now click on save data. Now we will go to the next page, which is currency exchange rates. So our hands-on is telling us um, that the exchange year, the exchange rate for the base year 2012 is 3.2. So we will put down 3.2 here in the 2012 box. There are also three different options here. Steady rate, exchange rate reflects inflation rates, and yearly exchange rate. So our hands-on is telling us that we should choose exchange rate reflects inflation rates. So we will click on this. And now we save our data. So we've finished our general data, which is within case data, and now we'll move on to taxation data, which you can go to by clicking on the taxation data button on the left here. Our first page, our first page is tax and depreciation information. And we are told that we VAT is applicable to 80% of the total investment expenses. So we will put down, we will click on VAT 
on investment and we'll put down 80. We are also told that we are assuming 10% as VAT rate for Malaysia, so we'll put down 10 here. We need to tick on tax law should be carried forward. And we will have to choose the steady rate option at 25%, so we'll put down 25 here. And now click on save. The next page is royalty payment. However, for this coal power plant, we are assuming that royalty is not applicable, so we will leave this page empty. So we will now move on to the next page, which is the initial balance sheet, which you can click on from the left menu pane here. Since we are developing a project finance case without an existing balance sheet, we will also skip this page, which is the assets and liabilities page, and we will skip the other pages as well, so the old commercial loans, old bonds data, committed investment data pages, we will skip. And now we'll move on to the next one, which is sales and purchase data, which you can navigate to from this left menu pane. And we will now have to add in data regarding sales. So the first page you'll see is sales data. And now we will have to add data, so we'll click on this green plus symbol. The following screen will appear. So in product names and units, the user can choose the various products associated with the power plant. So there is electricity, heat, water, and CO2. So we will choose electricity for our coal power plant. But note that for each of these products, a, data, a new data screen needs to be defined. So in this case, as we're only looking at electricity, we will only need one data page. Our client, we will assume, will be Malaysian Utility Company. So we will put down MUC for short. We are choosing the local currency, which is Malaysian Ringgit. And um, the quantity of electricity to be sold can be presented as a fixed quantity or as yearly data. So for this, for this um, hands-on exercise, we will assume yearly data. So we'll click on yearly data and not fixed. And the base price of electricity will be 0 0.25 ringgit per kilowatt hour. So we put down 0 0.25. And we will, can see that there are three options for price on the right hand side here. There's yearly current price, yearly price change in addition to inflation, and standard change in addition to inflation. So for this example, we will choose yearly price change in addition to inflation, so the second option here. And we will put down zero in this box here to ensure yearly price change in addition to inflation. The annual quantity of electricity to be sold, we are told, is 3,500 gigawatts hour. So this will be entered in the 2017 field. So first we save our data and now we go back to edit it and this table will appear. So we go to the 2017 box and we put down 3500 as our quantity. And now we will click on save again. So we will leave purchase data blank because our hands-on is not giving information on purchase data and we will move on to consumers contribution and deposits. However, since the current plant is built as an IPP under a new project company and does not sell electricity directly to the consumers, the consumers contribution is ignored. So we will leave this page blank as well. And we will also leave fixed revenues and other income blank. And there we have it. We have now added all the required case data. Well done. So now we have completed the hands-on to exercise.
and we will continue with this case study in the next hands-on, hands-on three, where we will look at plant data.